Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. The big question is, is Android the best mobile operating system for you in your smart home? Let's get to it. Earlier in the week we talked about iOS potentially being the best operating system or the best mobile operating system for your smart home. We talked about some of the positives and negatives and some of the hardware associated with that and that's what we're going to do here today. Now if you don't know what Android is or you know you probably do know what Android is you just might not have an idea of when you're using Android. Well it's the mobile operating system that isn't on iPhones or iPads. So basically, if you're using anything else in the world, you're using Android. So it's just iPhones and iPads that have the iOS operating system and really there's nothing else left on the market. Microsoft is gone, Blackberry is gone. Lots of these other operating system makers they're gone. In the early days of Android, they had some catching up to do, especially as it related to the applications or the apps that were on their Play Store. Nowadays, Google has fully caught up and all of the home automation applications that you could want, if this and that, Stringify, OpenHab, Home Assistant, all of these things, you know me and Yeti, and all of the manufacturer applications from Samsung and Amazon and all of the big home automation makers have applications on the Android Play Store. So nowadays there's really no difference in terms of applications. One thing that is unique to Android and does not show up on iOS is called Tasker. And Tasker is a really powerful, essentially a scripting uh, automation tool but there's a lot of plugins and things that you can add to Tasker that make this scripting really simple you don't have to do any scripting basically and so it begins to sound a lot like shortcuts for iOS and that's one thing that the Android system is missing you're missing HomeKit you're missing Siri and you're missing shortcuts but you have Tasker one of the biggest benefits of Google's Android here is the integration with Google Assistant. And we're seeing this get better and better every day, and especially on Google's native devices, so the Pixel 3 or the Pixel 2, the direct integration of the Google Assistant really makes it become a whole nother Google Home Hub because it has an, a visual interface or it's capable of giving you visual clues or, or things and you're able to wake it just similar using the wake word that Google has for their products. So in terms of Android devices getting automation capability, this is extremely powerful with the most powerful and the, the strongest voice assistant on the planet. One of the other things that really impresses me about Android is their widgets capability. And this is very different than Apple's widgets where you just have one screen that you can go to. This gives you the ability to actually create a dashboard for yourself so you're not having to go in and out of applications. And when we think about the smart home, this is something that I think we know Google has been, been driving towards within their Google Assistant to create that dashboard that you wanna go to every day that utilizes all of Google services, but also allows you to control your smart home. Now you can already do that with some of the widgets that are available on your Android devices and it's much harder and it's a few extra swipes or taps to get to them on iOS and that's a big difference actually when you think about utilizing something every day for years. One other thing about the integration with the Google Assistant and really Google Home and on all of Google's products, well you tend to on an Android device get access to features earlier than people who have an iOS device and let's go through a little list here. Routines showed up on Android a lot earlier. So did continued conversation actually. And on top of that, the Google Duplex is only available on a few Android cell phones right now. And that is one of the biggest features out there. Does Duplex ever get to an iPhone? I don't know if that's possible. In terms of a platform, the interesting thing about Android is that it is basically as old as iOS is or a few years younger, but it is being replaced. So 
this is really key when we talk about going out and maybe purchasing an Android device today. We need to think about the fact that Android is being replaced. Now what I'll tell you is some devices that Google is building today are capable of being upgraded to their new operating system. So the new operating system that they're building, they're calling it Fuchsia right now. And the Pixel 3 is capable of running Fuchsia. So we know that from some testing reports and some testing that people are doing. And this means that a Pixel 3 is essentially future proof to that upgrade from Android to Fuchsia. And what's very important to note about that is some of the current Android devices that are being sold and this is really something that Google's always done they've allowed people or companies to build on top and layer something on top of Android to be able to go and produce their own version of Android so Samsung is is probably uh, the example of that or the best example of that they have layered on what is kind of their operating system on top of Android and personally I wish they stop doing it but they have done that and it allows them to kind of customize things and give you access to a specific app store for their applications and Google has always allowed this and it makes things powerful in some cases and gives you a customized experience in some cases but it can also be a drawback and when we think about one to two years from now Fuchsia going out will all of those other makers of smart home or smartphones rather uh, be able to upgrade to Fuchsia. In my iOS video here about it being potentially the best mobile OS for your smart home I talked about the hardware and it's a little bit or it's a lot harder actually to talk about the hardware as it relates to Android but in general what I'll say is if you're looking at Google's Pixel 3 it is not based on being the best hardware out there today. The iOS devices tend to be some of the best uh, hardware physically on the planet or at least available today. They're always improving and so is, is Google and LG and Samsung and all these makers that go and create Android products. But ultimately what I find is some of the flagship Android devices aren't necessarily up to the same level of sophistication and or the same level of finish and I, I think actually finish is the right word to use the finish on the Android devices is maybe not there now personally when I'm talking about a smart home and the ability to control and, and have the best access to the best smart home things I don't really care about the finish of my phone. The other thing about hardware on an Android device is because you have so many makers, they can do so many different things with it. And this means that you have tablets on the very, very low end of the spectrum. And I even remember my little seven inch Google Nexus 7 actually. And I love that tablet still to this day, if it could run the operating system, it it was a fantastic tablet. It was the right size just to kind of walk with or take anywhere you went. And it was a really different experience from the Galaxy Tab A or E or the, these 10 inch behemoths that you can go and carry around and can cost upwards of $700. So there's a real range of tablets and phones that you can get access to with Android because base Android can be used, but a lot of things can be layered on top. So as we think about that with a maker like Smart uh, Samsung Smart Things, we can think we can foresee the opportunity for Samsung to go out, use Android or Fuchsia in the future, and layer something on top that is really powerful for your smart home. Finally, their voice assistant is the best in the world right now, and I foresee that being the case for a very long time. The only voice assistant that they're missing is Apple's voice assistant because Apple hasn't deployed it on there. Now, ultimately, that's not a big deal to me, but what they are missing is that shortcuts capability from iOS. So, what we're going to talk about in our very next video in this series is iOS versus Android directly. So get ready for that guys. We're gonna give you the best device for your smart home.